So in our video titled Rubber Band Motor, we made this thing, which is video number 2297. So you want to know how that was made, refer to that video and all the details are in there. What we're going to do now is make a generator so that our rubber band motor can actually generate some electricity. We're going to make that generator in the same way that we made the crystal generator. So, if you didn't watch this video, well, shame on you. You should subscribe and click notifications, but holding no grudges, there's a link at the end of this video if you want to see exactly how that was made, because they're all made the same way. And I don't want to go through the same stuff time and time again, so if you want to know some details about this, then refer to that video. However, we're going to make a cassette like that, which is this set centre section here, and it's made in the same way. But to help you, what I've done is I've done this cassette drawings in Tinkercad. The light blue is the main coil holder, the cream is the base, and the orange is the cap. You wind a serpentine coil like we've done all of our serpentine coils, stick the coil in the cassette and glue on the cap, then glue that to the base, and what you'll get is this. Now I've stuck a couple of um, racer bearings in there, they're actually skater bearings, they're 22 by 8 by 7 and there's enough room to fit two of them and you'll get that cassette and it's one whole solid part and if you want to make that by hand then jump to this video and that's exactly what that centre section is there, it's just smaller and more compact but made in exactly the same way, so we've got our cassette. The only other thing we need, of course, is our magnet carrier. And now for our magnet carrier, I've prepared this. All it is is a disc with some indentations to set some magnets. And there they are, they're 10 centimetres, sorry, 10 millimetres by 1 millimetre neodymium magnets. There's 18 of them and they're north, south, north, south. You just arrange those in those indentations on that ring and you need two of them. Then you need a gear. Two spacers, one at 20 millimetres, one at 5 millimetres, and of course an axle, and of course they've all been prepared for you in Tinkercad, and I'll put these files onto Thingiverse should anybody want to um, download them. But all these things are built the same way. First you have to build yourself some sort of generator, which is always some sort of arrangement of magnets and wire, and then we have to put that together, and then some input in order to get that thing to spin. Bin, which is exactly what happens here. Here's our generator section right there, there's our input which is a hand crank, and what we've built here is the generator section that we're going to attach the rubber band motor to. And to complete it, you just put the axle in there, slide on one magnet disc, slide on the other magnet disc, glue on this 5mm spacer to stop everything coming off, Glue on the 20 millimeter spacer on, sorry, it's the wrong side. 20 millimeter spacer on that side. Five millimeter spacer on that side. <laughs> he struggle, struggle. And then the cog goes on there where that 20 millimeter spacer was. That's our generator done with its input ready. That gear is going to take the input from the rubber band motor. That's our generator section that's going to generate electricity. Now on the motor, all I've done is put a couple of blocks, one at the back, one at the front, and of course they're drawn up in Tinkercad, and of course they're in the SDL files on Thingiverse, and all they allow you to do is just drop the motor down flat, so nothing rubs and it's nice and even. To charge it, or wind it up, all you do is exactly what I showed you in the previous video, give it a few turns. And that cog engages with the back cog, slide it into place until you see it engage, and then we're going to let it go. But what I've got here is a light bulb, and we're going to see if we can light that light bulb from a rubber band. <laughs> no problem at all! <laughs> Just do that again. <laughs> okay, so this time, I've attached a Rheingold multimeter to it, and we're going to do that again, and we're going to see what kind of voltage we get out of it. Okay, so it's open circuit voltage, but it'll give us some kind of idea. <laughs> okay, I think I got about 12 volts out of that, which is pretty good when you think 
It's a single rubber band. So we've got this one rubber band doing that. Now we wouldn't do it this way, obviously, this is a prototype. What you would do is use that discharge to charge something like, say, a supercapacitor, then use a, a, a less power-hungry lamp, and that would mean it would run longer because this would charge the supercapacitor in the short time that it runs, and that would even out the power so you got a longer time of being able to light it. There's another couple of things it could do with a ratchet because as you turn this, what happens is um, that turns too. It'd be better if it had a ratchet in here so that we, as we wound it up, the gears didn't turn. And the other thing would be um, this little turn handle I put onto Mechnik. It might be better if you had like, a crank handle so you cranked it round. So there are things to work on with this should anybody choose to. But I think what we've shown is that you can light an electric lamp from electricity generated from a single rubber band. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.